Good evening, colleagues, friends of Faza. Another week has passed, and it's been quite an eventful week. Um, please excuse this evening. Um, I've not got all the, the technical uh, staff and, and, and attributes available, so this is pretty much off the cuff, and I'm talking straight to you out of the heart uh, of where we are and what's happening. I must say this evening I, I'm a lot more positive. Um, I think there's various things that have maybe have happened this week that can attribute to that. Um, definitely today with me in Ascension Day, it also just makes a difference and we realize uh, what our lives really mean and without God, it's, it's really meaningless. And I think we've all spent time today just moving closer to our Creator and spending time with our families and the important things. I just want to come and encourage all of you. It's a really, really tough time, but I think we've dwelt on that enough. Uh, we all understand the challenges we face. Uh, I'm very comfortable at, at this stage is that um, we've got to take the challenges head on. Uh, we can only control that's what we uh, can take control of. Uh, there's so much that we can't control and we have no, no inputs into and um, I feel helpless when it comes to that point. The reality being, uh, it is what it is. We as an association won't stop. We will try everything to assist our members. We will listen to every single one of you. Um, I've taken numerous calls this week and I'll continue to do so. Um, I'll, I'll continue to engage with, with everyone and, and listen to your concerns. Um, please use the opportunity. Don't feel bad. I know Peter mentioned in the last video that you can call him as well. Uh, or any of the EXCO members, uh, whoever you feel comfortable with talking to, is all of you are important to us. And don't think that your your, your situation is just a matter um, and it may seem trivial. We value each of our members. We value uh, your livelihoods as well. That's what we are here. We are family. Um, we're an association that, that cares about our members and making a difference. Uh, without you, the member, the association wouldn't be here. And the very essence of what we, we stand for. It's an association of like-minded people. We are here to not only protect your livelihoods, but also to promote your livelihoods, to promote your lifestyle, uh, to promote our country. We're all ambassadors of the country of South Africa, and we try our very best. There's no shame in, in us earning a living uh, of what we do, and we do it with pride and we do it with responsibility. Like in any industry, there will always be a rogue element um, and we've got to realize that and we've got to um, rid the industry of, of those people that uh, are basically stealing from us at the end of the day. But that's enough of, of uh, FASA policy and, 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 and what we stand for. However, I just want to encourage people, please don't feel disheartened. Um, we, we really have... Uh, some opportunities that may arise shortly. Just to give you some feedback on the proceedings of this week, over and above the number of, of radio interviews we've had between Peter and myself um, on various radio stations, uh, Aris Gheer, Money Web, um, Toria Radio, um, local radio stations, Waterberg Radio, uh, various magazines, Landbo Werkblad, Farmers Weekly, report all over uh, we've been constantly engaging in the media to create the awareness of where our industry finds itself um, and the challenges that we are facing and what makes our, in, our challenges so different to those of the rest of the industry. What people don't understand is that we've got a very complex industry uh, that doesn't just reside under one ministry. We basically reside under three ministries, Department of Agriculture, the Environmental Affairs and Tourism. And each one of these have got different legislations, different rules uh, that we've got to comply to and different compliance issues that we've got to address. We have, as, as an association have been intricately involved um, in various discussions uh, with the Minister of Environmental Affairs. Um, as you know, FASA is a member of WASA, the Hunting and Wildlife Association of South Africa. And we've had the opportunity to to engage with the minister on, on several occasions now and giving her our input and trying to find solutions to the challenges that we currently face. How we rebuild our economy and how we get our economy started up after this virus is still a challenge for the international 
segment of our business and uh, where most of our sales find us uh, as international dependent um, operations, we have no choice at this stage but to, to weather the storm. It's, it's, it's not an easy period, but with God's strength, we will definitely get through this. Um, I urge all of you to think practically and let's see how we can find practical solutions to the challenges we've got, um, how we can try and stimulate an economy again in the rural areas, how we can try and stimulate uh, growth, because I see some challenges and I also see opportunities. Um, we've got to help each other through the situation and reach out to one another. Uh, we definitely understand that the limitations that we've got and then are being imposed on us, um, often we don't necessarily agree, uh, mainly because we don't always understand how the processes were put in place or why they were put in place um, and, and what was the, the motivation for these various lockdown rules and, and, and processes and procedures. But we, we continue to contest and to try and find the best solution for our people. Uh, I can assure you that the, the Exco has been working extremely hard. Even though it's been locked down, our ladies in the office are there um, performing, performing a wonderful task. Uh, without them, there's a lot of the, the work that, that, that I've been involved in. I wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for them. And I'm really indebted uh, to their loyalty uh, and their commitment towards FASA. So with the Exco, um, even though we've got one of our Exco members sitting in the US, Richard Lemmer, he still every single day reports for duty and is loyally involved in everything we do uh, and actively participating and, and trying to make a difference. Every single one of our Exco members uh, on the FASA executive and on the foundation are all involved and in trying to make a difference, addressing issues that we've identified, trying to make it easier for a lot of you to get through this difficult period. FASA is about you, the member. Uh, during this period, what we can do is assist those that are in dire needs, those are, that are really uh, suffering. We don't have the financial assistance uh, as major corporations to, to give out cash donations uh, and, and those type of things, but where people have a hunger need or a food need uh, or something in that line or associations that we've been supporting in the past, we will most definitely assist. Uh, there's no attempt that we won't make to try and assist. And I think at this stage, if there's anything um, Humble is a, a difficult word, and this is at the point in time where we've got to uh, su submit ourselves and become humble. And if we're in a situation, let's put our pride and arrogance aside uh, and speak to us. We as the Exco will handle all the situations with confidentiality. We respect your privacy, uh, but we want to help you. And it's always been my philosophy um, that faith without deeds is meaningless. And at this stage, it's the deeds that are making the difference. Uh, I would really like to commend uh, Tony De Bruyne and, and the foundation under the leadership of Piet Potgieter uh, for what they have done and how they've been reaching out, um, not only to, to, to get in groceries and vegetables, um, the vast amount of meat, um, Peter Villiers and a lot of the other people gathering clothes uh, throughout the country. We know we're entering into winter months now. Uh, a lot of people aren't fortunate to have these luxuries. And we are trying to support where we can. We've taken hands with a lot of associations like Help Yach, um, where we distribute meat. Um, Abram Krill uh, Children's Home is one of the examples that we come to mind. Then we've got Peter Tam uh, and Irvin Tam uh, down in the Eastern Cape uh, that have done a wonderful job uh, with, with the Amy Bell Foundation and how they're reaching out to those communities there. Rural communities are dependent on the hunting infrastructure that's been created and, and the outfitters and the farmers in those areas. Uh, and as long as we, we're capable, we will definitely continue to do so. I just want to come tonight and urge every one of you, um, don't give up hope. Uh, we're hoping to see some changes coming about shortly with us moving to level three. We have given our inputs to the various ministers of, of what we foresee should be in those levels. Uh, we've addressed some of the challenges. Um, if I could just name a couple at this stage, especially that are pertinent to the professional hunters. I've had some calls from people asking me um, about the permits that will be expiring. Um, the, the minister has assured me that she will address it with the departments and they will definitely looking at, at mechanisms is how it can be extended. And if there are challenges that you're facing with it, please let me know. The other 
challenge that we sit with. A lot of the professional hunters uh, won't be able to hunt this year. So that means that they will not be able to get adequate days to fulfill their, their compliance um, that are required for a three-year cycle to renew their license. Um, that has also been taken up with the minister, and uh, it looks like we will get an exemption on that there. So there's a lot of things from the professional hunting side that we've dealt with with the minister. Um, also on, on the land own, owner's behalf, FASA uh, has a lot of landowners. Um, there are also WRSA members um, and members of various associations. All associations at the stage are involved, and I don't think a single association can, can take credit uh, for the work that's been done. Um, in, in times of need, we've all stood together, and we're trying uh, to put our efforts together to make a difference. Um, I can only commend the leaders of, of these associations for the cooperation um, that we have and putting differences aside in trying to find the best solution for all our people. Uh, there's a lot at stake here. Um, we are probably the industry that's been affected the most, but we most definitely, I think, are one of the industries that's trying the hardest to find solutions. And like we said, uh, we won't run out of plans. If plan B doesn't work, the alphabet's got a lot of letters still left. So we will come up with a lot of uh, ingenious type of ways um, of, of finding solutions and presenting them to the relevant authorities. So saying this, um, I'd just also like to say uh, our meeting with uh, Minister Cressy this week from the wildlife industry, uh, I think was extremely well received. It's really nice to have a minister that understands uh, and fully comprehends the challenges we face uh, and is enlightened to what our industry is about and is committed to assisting us uh, going forward. Uh, this evening I've been very fortunate also to have uh, a private audience with um, the Minister of Tourism and she's endured a lot of criticism and a lot of people are, are extremely negative because of, of certain statements and like, like I said, as far as being apolitical, uh, I don't think it's, it's our um, mandate to get involved in that sphere, but I think the concerns around BEE and a lot of the challenges uh, are a lot clearer to me after having the discussion with her this evening. And I feel comfortable that we can build bridges and look forward at finding solutions. Uh, after this virus, we've got to explore every opportunity to grow the economy, to grow the tourism economy, which is going to be our biggest challenge. And um, I've been assured by the minister that she will be engaging with us on a frequent basis to look at how hunting can be incorporated and acknowledged uh, as a significant contributor to the tourism industry. On all these issues that uh, we've been dealing with, it does take time. And I know there was mention that uh, I look tired. Hopefully I look a lot better tonight and I'm a little bit more energized. Um, and I think that's the, 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 the positive feeling uh, that I've got. Um, we've got our, our prayer groups going and we've got people out there that are, are carrying us in prayer. And every day, just send little messages through to the office, um, words of encouragement. It might seem simple, but it means a lot to us. It's really uh, good to know that we're serving you as an industry and we, we, we're doing our best. Um, and if there's something that you feel that we ha haven't seen or, or neglected, please let, make us aware of it. Uh, I have been in discussions with the international shows um, and we're looking at solutions and, and trying to find out what is going to be best. But we deal with so many unpredictables and, and uh, moving uh, targets at the stage and um, milestones that we don't know how are going to be achieved. Um, we don't know when flights will resume. Um, it could be earlier, it could be later. So all these variables are going to be taken into consideration. As soon as we have the latest updates, I'll make them available for you. Uh, we don't know at this stage also on the other issue of the firearms amnesty. Uh, is that going to be extended? And I just want to please encourage all members at this stage. Is the current amnesty is, is running out? Um, and if you've got firearms issues that haven't been resolved, uh, please go and address those issues before it's too late. If you need some help, please contact us so we can get you to, you to in contact with the correct people. Um, as you're all aware, I, I'm s serving on a high-level panel, and we've been intensely involved in um, a lot of, of meetings this week and a lot of discussion with various stakeholders and role players. Um, and you've all seen that the, the deadline for comments have, has been extended. And I want to urge each and every one of you to please participate. Let's get rid of the apathy. Let's get involved. Let's make a difference. Without your comments, um, we can't complain at the end of the day when things don't go the way we'd like it. So it is a responsibility of every single one of you is to make your contribution. Um, the wildlife industry is dependent 
uh, on your comments and your and your participation. Please let's not sit back and, and, and hope somebody else does it for us. The responsibility resides with each one of us. In closing, um, I really want to say thank you very much for each and every one of you out there. I know that each one is going through a different challenge. Um, we have our challenges and each one is, is, is totally different and I, I, I can't um, profess to, to understand the challenges you're going through. Uh, but please reach out to us, make us aware if we can help, we will. I want to thank you for your loyal support. Uh, in my last message, it was a very difficult one coming out and asking uh, for you to please pay your father's membership, especially in difficult times like this. But by paying your membership, you've enabled us to do a lot of the tasks. Um, yes, we've cut back significantly, and, and uh, um, it, it's, it's really amazing to see what can be done when it needs to be done. But we still have a deficit, um, and uh, that, that is, is probably for various reasons. Uh, I want to thank those members that, that have paid their, their, their membership fees and their dues. I encourage those that are in a situation where uh, you're not able to, to please contact the office and let us know. We don't want to lose members um, just because you're sitting with a financial issue. Talk to us. Um, we're here. We're flexible. And like I said, uh, we're not dictating to you that you must. We really want to help you. Uh, we don't have endless funds to be able to do this, but I'm sure we can meet an arrangement somewhere. So please contact the office. Let them know of your situation. Uh, and then for, the, for those of you that we see in plain Afrikaans, for that plain slap gaat is, um, please, folks, we need that money. Uh, play your, pay your dues. Uh, it enables us to do an extreme amount of work. Um, not only that is a lot of people going forward are going to need assistance. By you paying your dues, we are able to assist so much more. Um, so please... Once again, it's it's not comfortable in a situation like this to come and 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 um, ask you to to honour your responsibilities. And I understand the challenges, but once again, is don't bite the hand that feeds you. Father's really trying, uh, and we will continue to do so. Have a good evening. Um, when you view this tomorrow, uh, hopefully you'll be well rested, and looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, we assure you that we still stay. Uh, on our posts and we continue night and day uh, there are no challenges that go unanswered and we are here at your service and continue to do so take care look after yourself stay safe and be vigilant um, in these times like i said uh, it is really a, a prayer of mine every night that god's protection will be over each one of you especially on the farms um, as we anticipate a lot of, of, of challenges coming forward as this virus spreads and the poverty and the hunger needs are greater. Have a good evening and I look forward to talking to you again. Good night.